What's up, everyone? This is Josh from Cupid Techie, where I help you learn Linux and break into the tech field one command at a time. And today we're checking out Linux Mint 22.3, code name Xena. And yeah, this is a big one. Mint is already one of the most recommended Linux distros on the planet, especially for folks coming from Windows. And this release is another long-term supported version that's gonna be around for a while. Now, before we get too far in, real quick, if you enjoy Linux content that's practical, honest, and beginner friendly, go ahead and hit that like button and consider subscribing. It genuinely helps the channel and it lets YouTube know this kind of content is worth pushing. Also, hype it if you can. Now, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through what Linux Mint 22.3 actually is, what's new and what changed, who this distro is really for, and my honest thoughts after using it. Now, this isn't hype and this isn't a commercial. I haven't been paid for this review. This is a real world Linux review, the kind I wish existed when I was first learning. So let's get to it. All right, so I'm at linuxmint.com and I want to quickly cover the history and philosophy of Linux Mint. Linux Mint has been around for a long time and it's built on a pretty simple philosophy. Make Linux comfortable, predictable, and usable for normal people. Now Mint is based on Ubuntu, specifically the Ubuntu 24.04 LTS base in this release. And that means you're getting a massive software ecosystem, strong hardware support, and long-term stability. Now Mint then layers its own tools, desktop environment, and opinions on top of that. And when I say opinions, I mean that in a good way. And that's because Linux Mint is not trying to be flashy. It's not trying to reinvent desktops. It's not chasing trends. This distro is for Linux beginners, Windows switchers, students, home users, devs who just want a system that stay out of the way, and honestly, a lot of professionals who are tired of fighting their OS. And if you want something that just works and lets you focus on learning Linux, Mint has always been a strong pick. Now, the desktop environments. Linux Mint officially supports Cinnamon, which is their flagship and the most popular. They also support Mate, which I really enjoy, and I'm glad they have support for it, as well as XFCE which is my favorite, as you guys know, if you've been following the channel for a while. And for this review, I'm gonna focus primarily on Cinnamon. Like I said, that is their flagship because that's what most people will download and it's where most of the development effort goes. Now, Cinnamon is a traditional desktop layout. It has a taskbar, system tray, storage style menu, highly configurable without being overwhelming. And if you're coming from Windows, this will feel familiar almost immediately. Now the package management and base under the hood, the base distro is Ubuntu 24.04 LTS. So the package manager is apt or APT and the default packages or dev base. It does support flat packs and it's enabled and encouraged as well as snap but it's disabled by default and that's intentional on purpose. Now Mint has been very clear about this. They prefer Flatpak over Snap and they give you a clean Flatpak setup out of the box without forcing Canonical's ecosystem onto you. So whether you agree or disagree, at least it's transparent. Now let me switch over to 22.3 Xena's release notes right fast. And also in order to download it, all you have to do is click download here and that'll take you over to the download page and you can get all the different versions, whichever version you want, there's the cinnamon version. So you, all you have to do is hit download, XFCE edition and the Mate edition right there. And then if we click over here, this is the blog page for the release. And then if you click down in here, they do have the release notes. You can click there and that'll open up the release notes with all the information about what was actually released. And I'll just cover some of the main highlights. They have updated the Cinnamon desktop with a lot of improvements. Like for instance, it's thinner, more modern Ubuntu fonts by default. For one, Pipewire is now the default sound server, improved shutdown behaviors, updated system tools and performance polish. Also hardware enablement, kernel 6.14 for newer systems. 
And this is a long-term supported release, supported until 2029, which is huge if you don't want to reinstall your OS every year. And then also, Mint does point releases on top of long-term base. That means you get stability, you get updates, you don't get constant breakage. This is not a rolling distro, and that's a feature, not a flaw. All right, so that kind of covers all of the new features. And of course, I'll have the link down in the description so you can go through and look at all of the new features within this release, because I didn't want to bore you guys with everything. But let's go on and jump over into the installation and I'll walk you through that live. So let's get to it. What's up, y'all? If you've been watching my channel for a minute, you already know I stay talking about Linux. And if you're looking for a solid, reliable enterprise Linux distro, let me put you on to Rocky Linux. This is the go-to replacement for CentOS and it's built for the community by the community. It's got everything you need for a stable and secure Linux experience, whether you're running servers, home labs, or enterprise workloads. And the best part is backed by CIQ, making sure it stays rock solid for the long haul. So if you're tired of these companies pulling a plug on your favorite distros, Rocky Linux is where you need to be. And I've covered Rocky Linux before, and trust me, it's worth checking out. So head over to rockylinux.org to learn more and get started. Keep it techie. Peace. All right, so let's run through the install. I'm at the live grub menu right fast. So let's go down and start up the Linux Mint Cinnamon version. We can actually go right into the install. This is the OEM install. Let's say you have a system that you, I don't know, let's say you're a company, you're selling systems, you can go into the OEM install. That's for a manufacturer. So that's cool. They have an option for that. And you can boot from the next volume that'll skip the actual disk. And then you got UEFI firmware settings and memory test. But we're going to go right in here to start Linux Mint 22.3 Cinnamon. So you can go into compatibility mode as well, but we're going to go into the first one right fast. And let's just walk you guys through the install. They're going to have a install script on the desktop once we get into it. And I'll also fix the display settings as well once we get into it. So it'll look a little better. All right. So we logged into the live ISO and you can play with the distro from here if you want to, but I'm going to just walk you guys through the install right fast. So let's hit install Linux mints. That's the script right there. It'll open up the installer and we'll run through it right fast. And this will install the cinnamon version. I downloaded the cinnamon version. So this is basically cinnamon and this is what it'll look like once we get it installed. But just want to quickly go through it with you guys. Just show you guys how simple it is to install, select your language, select your keyboard layout, which is English for me, just based on whatever you're using. And as you can see, it's similar to the Ubuntu installer. You'll see that once you get to it, you can install your multimedia codexes if you need to. You can configure secure boot if you want to. I'm gonna just skip that right fast. And that's for a UFI erase the disk, install Linux Mint. That's fine. You can go under your advanced features. They do have LVM and they also allow you to encrypt the disks if you want to. I'm not going to mess with that. And then you can also modify your partitions yourself. But we're going to go through the install. Like I said, it's super simple on how to install this. I should go into setting up our user accounts at this point. Location. Yeah, here we go. Location. User account it should be installing in the background. I'm just put Mint 22 bad three let's go to roll with that and then type in a super strong passwords and oh man mint says it's fair but now nah, we're gonna roll with that require my password on login that's cool and put my home directory if you want to we're gonna skip that let's just hit continue and let it install and then this will go through the install and then once it finishes you can continue playing with the live desktop environment or you can reboot and log into the full environment if you want to and that's up to you and it'll start with the partitioning as you can see and then it'll go through and copy all your files to the desktop environment and then install the operating system on your hard drive so i'll be back when it finishes and i'll just bring up a few things showing you guys the updated system from there and then we'll close out the video all right as you can see the installation is complete all we have to do is hit restart now and that'll restart us into the freshly installed operating system, or you can continue testing, which we're gonna just hit restart now. So I'll be back when it comes up. 
Right. So just to quickly walk you through this, this so pop up. This is just the main dialogue that shows you welcome to Linux Mint. Welcome to your new operating system. Let's go. It'll basically walk you through the first couple of steps. You could change your desktop colors, system snapshots. You can set that up. Your driver manager, you can launch that. Multimedia cut codex, update manager, system settings, software manager, firewall. All of this stuff. Documentation. This basically shows you how to get to the documentation. Basically, open up the website. All the new features. It'll launch the release notes and all the new features for this release of this version. Click on those two. And you can get your help. They'll take it to the forum, the chat rooms, all that good stuff. And you can also contribute to this distro if you need to. And one of the first things you want to do when you install any Linux distro is to update it, which I recommend you guys do. Now, I have been playing around with this new version of Linux Mint since it's been released a couple days ago. And I have to say, I am impressed by this new release. All right, so now that it's installed and I've spent some time using it, let's talk honestly. So some of the strengths, stability is still king. This thing is rock solid for daily use, work, school, or learning Linux. Mint remains one of the least stressful experiences you can have. Cinnamon feels polished, it's responsive, it's clean, and it doesn't fight you. Animations are smooth, menus make sense, and settings are logically organized. Beginner friendly without being dumbed down. Mint doesn't assume you're clueless, but it also doesn't throw arch level complexity at you on day one. Also drivers, codecs, updates, firewall tools, backup utilities, it's all there ready to go. And then also the support, like I said, it's long-term. So it's supported through 2029 means you can install this and forget about distro hopping for a good amount of time. Now, some of the weaknesses, Kernel 6.14 brings better hardware support, but it can cause problems with VirtualBox or older NVIDIA cards using the 470 driver. Now, Mint is upfront about this, and they even recommend sticking with an earlier Mint version if your hardware needs it. And so that honesty matters. Now, if you love bleeding edge packages or constantly rebuilding your system, Mint might feel boring. Now, also you might run into a few pipe wire transition quirks. Most users will be fine, but audio issues can pop up on certain hardware. Mint provides clear instructions if you need to fall back to pause audio, but most likely you should be good. Now, performance and resource usage, Mint Cinnamon runs comfortably on four gigabytes of RAM, which is recommended, and a modest CPU. So older laptops and desktops, it's not ultra light, but it's far from bloated. And on modern hardware, it feels snappy and responsive. And that's due to the time that I ran it on a couple of my test laptops that I have in my environment. Now, just to point out a few of the default applications, you get Firefox, LibreOffice, VLC, Update Manager, Driver Manager, Backup Tools, like I pointed out a little earlier when we brought up the welcome page, as well as System Snapshots and Time Shift. And this is a complete desktop OS out of the box. Now, who do I recommend this distribution for? I would say Linux Mint 22.04 is perfect for people new to Linux. Windows users looking for a stable replacement, students learning IT or system admin basics, also home lab users who want a reliable desktop or anyone tired of fighting their OS. Now, who is not for? This probably isn't for hardcore minimalists. Also, those people that like rolling release distributions like me. That's why I've been sticking with Arch and I know Arch is, I don't know, people are starting to find issues with Arch and moving away from Arch. I'm still an Arch fan. I love Arch. I still use it. I have no issues. Now I tried a different desktop environment. I am currently running KDE. I found somewhat of a love for KDE just playing around with it. And also I do a lot of my editing with Kaden Live. So I don't run into as many crashes with Kaden Live on KDE, which is made to run on KDE anyway. And plus a lot of the software that's incorporated with KDE is pretty good. And also it's not as bloated as it used to be. Now also this is probably not for people who want the newest packages immediately. Users who enjoy breaking and fixing their system weekly. And that's okay. Lastly, where does Mint fit into the Linux ecosystem? I would say Mint is a safe recommendation for a reason. It lowers the barrier to entry without lowering expectations. It's not flashy, it's not trendy, but it's dependable. And in tech, dependable is very underrated. 
All right, so that is Linux Mint 22.03 Xena. This release doesn't try to wow you with radical changes. And honestly, that's why it works. It refines what already made Mint great and locks it in for years of support. If you're curious about Linux, trying to break into tech, or just want a desktop that doesn't fight you, Mint is still one of the best places to start. And if you've already tried Mint 22.3, let me know down in the comments. What hardware are you running it on? Are you using the Cinnamon desktop or the Mate or XFCE edition? And also, have you ran into any issues or surprises so far? Also, if there's another distro you want me to cover next, drop it down below. And as always, take your time, break things safely, and remember, you don't have to know everything to get started. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Keep it techie. Yo, what's up, y'all? Listen, if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move, let me tell you, tech is where it's at. I don't care where you're coming from, whether you've got a degree, a GED, or just pure hustle. There's room for you in this game. You see, tech is more than just keyboards and code. It's solving problems, creating opportunities, and building the future. You already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start. It cares where you're willing to go. You can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's gonna take effort. You'll have to grind, but think about this. The time is gonna pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career, it's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it, because the future is yours to build. Keep it tech. Wow. <laughs>